What's good, people? I just want to do a video today talking about uh, parents being strongholds, parents being demonic strongholds. Uh, obviously, this doesn't uh, this doesn't um, apply to people who've got families who are on fire for for God. So, if your mother and father, I literally pray for you, uh, intercede with you, fast with you, study the word with you, and they are on fire for God, um, and they've gone through healing and deliverance. It doesn't apply. Sadly, with most situations, you're not going to have that. Unfortunately, um, I know that my mother is lukewarm. Uh, meaning she went to church when she was really younger in her teenage years and um, now she has been reading the bible more recently because we've been praying for her for the spirit of god to lead her closer so she's been reading the bible more recently which thank god please pray for my family's salvation by the way but my father is atheist narcissistic atheist um, doesn't believe in heaven and hell believes that when you die you're going to be he's going to be sprinkled on a football pitch as ashes and that'll be good because when you're dead that's it which seems to suit atheists and narcissistic people because then it's like well then you're going to enjoy this life and do exactly what you wish in this life with no for further future thought of the ramifications of your actions if you're going to say a little lie you know betray someone manipulate people to get your own way to get money to do whatever it is you want to get then you're not going to have any thoughts of the ramifications of your actions heaven and hell the concept of heaven and hell not existing and when you're de dead that's it suits narcissistic people suits atheist people suits mockers and scoffers it's comfortable sounds good feels good when you say it but the but the the reality of the truth is much deeper than that that we are going to be judged for what we say and do in this life not just to ourselves but to others so remember the fear of fear of god is the beginning of wisdom so work on your own salvation with fear and tre trembling work on your own salvation with fear and trembling so parents of demonic strongholds is the title of this video today and um i just wanted to cover this because this is this is something that i know is definitely a fact for most families most people don't haven't been through deliverance and if deliverance takes some time if some deliverance takes two three months to tear down a single stronghold well then a family that's got like blood bloodline lineage um and generational curses dating back you know for generations where there's witchcraft and occultism and freemasonry and sexual sin and stealing and lying and cheating and alcoholism and drink and drug abuse all these things are curses on your bloodline and there's demons in your bloodline because of the curses from the iniquity the family iniquity this is passed down and this is why we see um you know fathers abusing their sons abusing their, their sons and, and and until the you get the, to the generational curse breaker which is the man or woman of god the or the son or daughter of god um in that family to bring god back into the family because sadly most families are following idolatry they're idolizing pop stars rock stars rappers um you know entrepreneurs philosophers you know movies stars journalism intellectualism you know everything they're idolizing other than they're putting their idolatry their worship into god you're not meant to idolize christ to get a statue of christ and idolize him is also a form of idolatry which is done in the the church the 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 satanic churches which are the roman catholic churches or the satanic churches they are the hijacked faith so they are the counterfeit christianity the worldly christianity where there is idolatry in those churches so parents being demonic strongholds because they've not been through deliverance most of them and if they have been through deliverance if it takes two to three four months just to deliver to, to get delivered of one certain stronghold prayer and fasting 
who's to say that, that, that they've been delivered of everything in that family so parents are unfortunately demonic strongholds parents cause major problems for um for for new believers in in a family for the generational curse breaker i can attest to that for myself i'm speaking about jesus this that and the other and it's become a thing where i've had to get away from my family really and truly you know if your family most families are stupid in this in the sense of when it comes to the things of god because i've told my family all these things and it just goes in one ear and out the other so really what more can i say and it, it becomes a thing where most of us are going to actually have to leave our families and get away from them because they are a demonic stronghold and it's worldly to always want to be around your family eating food and doing this i'm not saying that you aren't to enjoy that but as you get older why do you need to be come to every birthday and every family thing and every this and go out for a meal and you just go there and sit there anyway and you do like after speaking for an hour it's like okay, i've had a catch up now what really really do i want to do your this is not the work of god it's not the work of god to be sitting with your family all the time and being around your family and associating with your family if your family are praying with you and fasting with you then it's a different story but sadly many families there's a lot of families christian families say they're christian families who they're worldly they live a worldly life they live a worldly life in the week on the weekend, they go and they, they go to church and pretend to do the church thing. They go for so many people in the body live a worldly life, do what they want, repent of their sins, and then carry on, carry on, go like the basically like the Roman Catholics, you know, the confession box, going in the confession box, make your confession, and your sins are forgiven, and then on and carrying on. But you don't realize that when you're yielding your members out to do unrighteousness. And you're just using the grace, the cheap grace message of just being able to sin and carry on sinning and carry on. You're just yielding your members to, to wickedness and unrighteousness. And what you're doing is you're setting up evil altars and shrines inside you and your family bloodline from committing these sins, from using your members to curse, from using your lips to curse, from using your lips to slander, from using your eyes to, 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 to lust, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. The lust of the eyes, the pride of the pride of life. You're using your eyes to lust on, you know, people get addicted to food. That's lust. Gluttony, you know. Um, TV shows, video games. This is all lust of the eyes. You know, anyone who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him, in him. The lust of the flesh, the pride of life. You know, these come from the world. Anyone who's, who loves these things, you're loving what's in the world. You know, put our, put our minds on the unseen realm, the higher realms. What is unseen is eternal. What is in this realm is temporary. All of this stuff around me, everything is passing away. Everything's decaying, passing away. Eventually, you know, buildings become abandoned. Things are built and erected. Rome fell, you know, so many civilizations are built and then they fall. All of what we build and create in this dimension is going to one day completely just be disintegrated and, and gone. And what will then be the only spiritual currency is what we did in this dimension. And if what we did in this dimension is a self-centered, selfish way of looking at things and doing things to only feed our own flesh, I'm going to get money because it's going to make me look good. I'm going to get a career because it's going to make me this... And everything's all the self, 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 narcissism, 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 selfishness. Then we're we're heading for the abyss. That's why they say it's 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 easier for um, it's it's harder for a rich man. It's easier for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle than to pass into heaven. How many rich people, filthy rich people, who worship Mammon? By the way, you cannot serve Mammon and and God. You, you cannot serve, have two masters, mammon and God. You either serve one master out of the two. Mammon is money. So mammon is the idol of money. You know, trinkets, jewels, money. It's the idol of this. So people worship money. They put money before God. But money's not saving your family lineage and bloodline. Man, money isn't bringing your bloodline in alignment with, with God's life purpose for each and every soul that incarnates in your family bloodline. That's why I say parents are demonic strongholds because parents will put excessive stress and tension and trauma and, and, and pressure 
on their children to be doctors, you know, nurses, lawyers, um, I don't know, business owners. And I'm not saying that it's that is that there's anything wrong with ambition and having people because obviously slothness is a sin. If you're just sloth and you're lazy and you're not doing anything with your days. But this is becoming worldly. We do need lawyers, we do need doctors, we do need these things, but many families put put excessive pressure to, for people to become a certain thing or follow in their mother's and father's footsteps. And a lot of the time, the mother and father's footsteps aren't really kosher. They're running, you know, businesses that are, that are uh, illicit or businesses that aren't really co kosher things. And this is demonic stronghold the, that because satan's using ephesians 6 12 demons are working through people so uh, we've we've wrestled not against flesh and blood against principality so the principalities are trying to set up demonic shrines and altars in your bloodline through sin through transgression through disobedience through idolatry and then m sadly most families follow the idols of that family so when there is idols in a family bloodline and they want you to then follow the idols of the family bloodline. So some people might worship money. So that's the idol of mammon. They might think, put money above everything and in their family getting money and, and having success makes our family look good worldly to be seen by, the, by men to get approval of man. But you're not saving souls like that. These people, what do you do with that money as well? When people get loads of money, what do they do with it? Are you feeding the homeless? Has it has it ha, has it been something that you've used to make opportunities to then bless other people? Because God works in uh, in 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 holes. He he looks he looks at everything as how he looks at unity. So everything every decision that you make is not a decision for me. It's a decision that blesses the entire macrocosm, the microcosm needs to bless the the macrocosm you are the micro you are the microcosm blessing the macrocosm so if you're not blessing the macrocosm with your decision if it's just to bless yourself then it's not working in unison with god is it because it's selfish desire it's a lust of the flesh it's to look good um to get to seek approval of men to show off and many people seek money finances success for this pa parents put excessive stress on their children to to follow in their footsteps and their footsteps are are worldly their footsteps are not holy and if they haven't been through deliverance themselves the family they are a demonic stronghold you need to get away from them anyway i'm, I'm going on a little bit here so i need to bring up some scriptures that i want to go into for this so so Matthew uh, 10 32 to 4 to 42 this is the NIV version that's just the version that came up on Google um, whoever acknowledges me before others I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven but whoever disowns me before others I will disown before my father in he heaven do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to earth I did not come to bring peace but a sword for I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Let me say that again. Anyone who loves their father or mother is more than me is not worthy than me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever, acknowledge, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. If, and if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you that person will certainly not lose their reward. 
That was Matthew 10, 32 to 42. One of my va uh, favorite verses, hands down, that's one of my favorite verses. So this verse is basically saying that your own family members are going to be your enemies on this walk. And I can attest to this. So last Christmas, I didn't go, I didn't go to, to I had Christmas, obviously, uh, office to go see family, spend time with the family, Christmas. I said, I'm not spending time with you guys. <laughs> my family have done my head in over the years anyway. Very narcissistic family. I am the black sheep, scapegoat of the family. So I really don't like being in family um, family gatherings anyway because it's all about them showing off especially like my brother will show off about the things that he's doing. It's all again money based. I've got a new house. I've got this. I've got a new washing machine and a car. And it's, and I'm just like sitting there like I'm following Jesus and I'm doing my ministry and blah. And oh, he's doing that Jesus stuff. And they just want to mock you. And it's like, all right, well, fine. You want to be like that? I'm not going to be in your vicinity then because you are toxic. You are demonic. You are the Satan is using you um, as instruments of unrighteousness against me to oppress me, to persecute me, to, to send me to hatred, to cause me distress. You are no longer like you are affecting the will of God. So God got me out of the situation. He's even told me, especially with my narcissistic father, I don't want you to speak to him. When you see him, just don't say anything. And he's told me the best way of dealing with him is to start doing silent treatment when I speak to my dad because he always draws me into an argument with him. Very narcissistic. Those of you who've been, lived in a narcissistic household will know what it's like. If I can't speak about something and have you be respectful of me talking about Jesus and you're going to mock at it and scoff at it and laugh at it, then why am I going to want to be around you? Jesus Christ was the same. He rebuked everyone uh, who was in caught up in sin and evil gave them the scripture rebuked them um, ministered to people but if people weren't going to listen he wouldn't carry on casting pearls before swine if you're going to laugh at him and mock him and scoff him he was gone he would be out of the picture i am not and that's why it says flee you know preach from the rooftops you know from one place when you've been in one place preach and move to the other shout from the rooftops preach the gospel You've got to preach, you've got to plant the seeds and then just keep it rolling. And that's how I'm living my life now. I try and live my life, preach, give the seeds and keep it moving. I stay in the presence of the Most High. I didn't, I didn't, around Christmas, I didn't, I did not go and I didn't go and see my family on Christmas. I didn't want to see them on Christmas. Past few birthdays, I didn't want to see them either because I would come up with, I'd say to my family, I don't really want to do much. I just get like a Chinese takeaway and just chill. My mum was like, oh, okay. And then she, like my brother, where she'd make it, it was always some excuse for him to, oh, I'm working that day and blah, blah. And it was like so much hassle just for me to just want to just celebrate. What So I said, you know what? I'm celebrating my birthdays, my, my like, all of that on my own because you're all narcissistic. You want to put me in this triangulation thing and treat me a certain way. I don't appreciate it. I'm not, I'm not part of your group anymore you want to do your thing you do your thing um and it's 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 made a real impact in the family in that regard but there's that verse there proves it but a man's a man's enemies will be that of his own household you're a bit extreme why do you care so much you're going out without food why aren't you eating why aren't you do why are you praying you've you're you've gone mad you're crazy. And then your family are going to talk about you, persecute you, talk all kinds of wickedness about you because of your good behavior in Christ. Say that you've gone mad. Say that you've lost your mind. How hurtful is, is that for your own family to slander you and persecute you like that? But this is part of the par part and parcel of the path. If you're being persecuted like that by your own family, then you're doing the right thing. If your own family are on fire for God, then they're not even going to persecute you. If they're not on fire for God and they're lukewarm and they say that, oh, but you're just extreme. I don't follow. I don't follow the God that you follow. Whatever you're, you're like you, you're too much. You, you like smack everyone over the head with the butt. And they got their cheap grace. These people were like, like live like Pharisees. They're going to the pit. You can't treat other people like that and then just brush it under the carpet. 
God sees everything. Anyway, let's go to another verse. So I'm struggling to see it. I need my glasses. So Luke uh, 14 to 26 to 35. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear down his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who, com who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any of you who does not renounce all that he ha has cannot be my disciple. I'm going to say that bit again. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Now, I'm going to just give you a little bit of a testimony. So prior to me coming to God, I had a business in the uh, music industry. I was doing marketing for music artists. I, I was selling merch merchandise worldwide for my Instagram uh, business, Instagram page. I had a, bit, a large following on that, all of that. I don't post on that page anymore. I'm not involved with those people anymore. I've deleted those people. I've blocked many of those people because many of them are obviously serving serving the enemy. Uh, they're bound. A lot of them have got drink, drug problems, alcohol problems. Um, you know, I, I, I've abandoned my business uh, endeavors and now I'm all about my ministry. So now I'm doing everything is for the ministry now. And I'm, all I care about now is, is serving, getting souls into God's kingdom. I've been through so much persecution and trauma in my life that I don't even care anymore with about any of that stuff. I had the the pinnacles of success. You know, I, I had I, I went through that phase. It made my family my family actually are envious, so they're not really a business orientated family in that regards. Um, created a lot of envy. This all just played a part in bringing me closer to God because then I realised, wow, like when you do attain success, it's quite isolating in the sense of you realise that no one actually wants you to have that success. They want you to be miserable. So then you're like, well, I don't want anything of the world anymore. I only want what, what Christ is supplying to me. Christ brings me peace. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And uh, many of you are going to have to get rid of your family, block your family or get away from your family or no contact grey rock method for the narcissist. But, you know, people know the narcissistic terms, na no, no contact and grey rock, which is grey rock is where you go really blunt. You don't really say much. They speak to you. You're really blunt. You're not you don't divulge mo loads of information because they use the information against you, and triangulate you and bring you into arguments. So you're very blunt, you know, silent treatment, all this, just grey rock. Yeah, I'm not, no, I'm not not going there. I'm not going to the family outing. You're not going to guilt me. I'm sorry. I've got things to do. Bye. Very blunt. And then no contact is just block or, you know, don't contact, no contact. And some of us have to do that if we've got narcissistic family members. That's what we've had to do. Because they are a hindrance. You can lose your salvation being around people like that. Because they're going to bring you into like pagan festives and holidays and all this stuff. You know, ruin your fast, get to start you to get you drinking and just, just ruin your salvation. You get bound when you're around people who haven't been through loads of deliverance. If your family's got like witchcraft. For example, if your family's got witchcraft lineage in the, the family... Or idols in the family, you know, demons, demigods and that in the family. You're going to be bound by being around them. So why would you want to be around them? 
God doesn't want you to be sitting with your family every all day long. You need to be going. You need to be going out and building your ministry. Your ministry. You need to be going ministering to people, praying for people, saving people, listening to people, helping people, delivering people. Do you see what I'm trying to say? I like where I'm at now. I am just God has, has isolated me from my family, and I'm just praying for my family from afar because when I was around my family praying for them why are you doing that why are you praying in times uh, it's too much moaning 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 all the time I care about your soul and you're not even listening you're an idiot families are stupid most people's families are stupid they've been washed by the lies of the enemy the enemy's got their mind and they're just running running rampant through this world following the lust of the flesh head into the abyss in droves with everyone else and they want to drag you down and that's why they say misery loves company because many of them are miserable miserable I, i'm not I, I i hate being in this dimension and world i want to come out of it because i'm a man of god and that's what every ma true man and woman of god don't want to be in this this world because it's so wicked they want to be out of it but i i i enjoy i have peace like what God sets me out to do. It's a joy to serve the Lord. That's why that verse, what that verse means. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because then you realise when you serve the Lord, seek ye first the kingdom and, all will be, and his righteousness and all will be added unto you. Everything is supplied. You have all of your blessings. You do your, If you go full throttle into your ministry, you will have everything that you need to, 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 to carry on doing what you're doing. Because that's what God wants you to do. Everyone has a ministry. I'm not saying that every single person is meant to get into ministry per se full time. Some of you may work in job roles. For example, some people might be a vet. You may be a vet who works with with um, you know with animals, um, or you could be a nurse who works with people who are dying. And there's all these different like people can you know work in the system and then still run their ministry some people are called to be in ministry full time other people are called to be god needs uh, god needs his children to be in key he needs like holy doctors he needs holy you know nurses and these people they need to be in those positions because without it the world would be a mess so but work out what your what god actually wants you to do for your life one of the things I've learned recently is I thought I was going to be here and I was going to be doing a deliverance on people. I thought I was going to be actually a deliverance minister. But after doing a, a session, uh, five sessions of deliverance on, on the girl and then getting bound by it, God told me, no, you're more of an intercessor. So I'm a messenger of God. I'm to pray for people and then bring and deliver messages. And I spend time in his presence, I rebuke people, I give people messages. I give people the key what they need to move forward but learn what your purpose is on you know for, for the kingdom of god pray on it find it if you need to get away from your family then you've got to do it you know work out the best way because families are demonic strongholds they'll keep you bound to the, the demons and the spirits that are in the family and lineage and bloodline and it's just going to weigh you down and ruin your salvation in ultimately so they don't want to come to the lord it's no go and I mean, come to the Lord properly, come to the Lord, fast, pray, seek his face, read the word, worship. If they're not doing that, then you need to cut them off. Same with friendships. Do you know how many people, like, I've, I've lost count of so many people, like new ages, occult people that I used to associate with that I had to cut off. Because they're so bound by so many evil spirits and they've got so much dark energy around them, I can't be around them, it's bad for my spirit. If God's isolating you and you're going through a phase of isolation, he's levelling you up. The isolated are God's chosen people. because he, and That's why it says, come out from among them, be separate, and I will receive, touch no unclean thing and I will accept you. Be separate, come out from among them. Some Certain people are unclean, they've got unclean spirits, unclean ruachs. You have to come away from them, fast, pray, do deliverance, do worship. I'm going for. A, I'm fasting as we speak today, and I'm tearing down strongholds. But that has one of the things is I have to come away from family and certain unequal yokes, worldly people, to get my deliverance. 
I have to be in the presence of the Lord to do that. No distractions, no people, me and God. Anyway, people, I just thought I'd cover that. So just take that on board. Work out a way of, you know, at least minimi minimizing the communication with your family if they're unsaved and they're not with you, with God. Please pray for my family's salvation as well. And I'll catch you all on another video soon. Y'all bless. Peace, love, unity, faith, hope, and change.